What's up everyone? I'm Jeff Teague. I'm in Raleigh, North Carolina. We are at the park and what better place to test out the 2023 Mazda CX-50. As a matter of fact, this is the 2.5 liter turbo with premium plus. It's at the high end of the trim level spectrum here. And then it's poly metal gray metallic with this gorgeous terracotta interior. Over the course of this review, I'm gonna show you exterior styling. We're gonna go section by section. I'm gonna show you all the bells, whistles, buttons and controls that you might find in here. We're gonna talk about ride comfort, passenger comfort, and definitely a lot of technology. If you're new to this channel, we're very thorough. I wanna make sure you know enough about the vehicle that you're researching or learn more about the vehicle that you've already purchased, but we're gonna have fun. I wanna make sure you're part of the channel, so I'm gonna do 10 push-ups right now while you hit subscribe. Thank you. And where does this 2.5 liter turbo premium plus fall into the trim level and pricing spectrum? Well, the good news is there are many, many different trim levels. I'll show them here along with pricing. You can get one starting factory MSRP, just a little bit over 26,000. This one is the top of the food chain trim level, the top of the totem pole grade, and it'll start around $41,000. Now let's walk around this CX-50 so we can learn a little bit more about it before I go section by section. I want you to get a feel for the foundation, what it stands for, what it's all about, look at the profile, decide if you want to swipe, if you want some car version of Tinder, would you click, would you swipe? Let's look at the inside. First, we're going to look at the dash and then look at this. The CX-50 was designed to be a combination of premium, upscale, a little bit of luxury thrown in, but also off-roading capability, all-wheel drive capability. We're going to find an incredibly comfortable back seat with lots of rear seat legroom. We're also going to see here great technology. We'll call it simply modern. Oh yeah, look at that panel roof. We got a lot to talk about. The next three sections we're gonna talk about, fuel facts, engine performance, and then the front end. And there's a logical way of talking about this, but just marvel at this profile. This is an incredibly beautiful vehicle. It's beauty, it's grace, it's Miss United States. Now we come over here and we notice that the fuel tank right here, fuel door driver's side, 15.8 gallons. It gets 23 MPG in the city, 29 MPG on the highway. You can use 87 octane or you can use premium fuel. So let's open up this hood. And it's a great time to talk about this turbo engine. Fans, enthusiasts, owners, you can get two different options under the hood. You can get, well, not that, that's a turbo, but you can get a 2.5 liter four cylinder engine that's gonna produce 187 horsepower, 186 pound-feet of torque. Or you can get two different options here based on fuel with this 2.5 liter twin scroll turbocharged engine. You could get premium fuel, spend a little bit more. You'll get 256 horsepower, 320 pound-feet of torque. Or you can use 87 octane, then you'll be getting 227 horsepower, 310 pound-feet of torque. So it really depends on how much you want to spend at the fuel pump and how much you want to go fast. How much oomph you want. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Believe me, I regret it. I had to use the tagline. Who wouldn't? But anyway, it's matched with a six-speed automatic transmission. You can also pop that gear over into manual mode and you can use paddle shifters to simulate a more involved drive. This one right here comes equipped standard with iActive all-wheel drive. That means we're gonna get the best grip, the best traction based on the surface that you're going on. And you can actually change it up a little bit with your drive modes, remember, so that you get off-road mode, so that it gives you, working with the traction control, the best traction, the best grip. Sends the power to the wheels that can get you through that terrain or obstacle. Now this front end, I've never seen a front end that has more intricacies, more, as Doug DeMuro would say, quirks and features. But anyway, what we've got here, take a look at the lines here and just look at this aggressive slope up here. It's very sporty and it fits that off-roading capability style, but it whoop, whoop, it's bold. 
it's in your face. Now, if we look at just the lights here, adaptive lighting system, full LED headlights, LED daytime running lights, we've got LED turn signals, and then just take a look here at this grill. This is gloss black, it's three-dimensional, it's sort of like Then we've got right here, camera for the overhead 360 camera, that's pretty cool. Mazda badge in the house, but look at this right here. We've got an accent piece that comes all the way around and surrounds, becomes a grill surround that's really in your face. Then we've got parking sensors in the front and in the back, really cool stuff. And if you're interested in clearing rocks and stumps and things like that along the trails that you take this, well, 8.6 inch ground clearance. Yeah, that's right. I said you could go off-roading in this thing. That is impressive. Off-roading capabilities. Woo! 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 And I know this because I see a button that might be important to you. It's right here. It's the MI Drive, Mazda Intelligent Drive. That means drive modes. So what do we have here? Let's switch them around. We've got off-road. I told you, I knew it. I knew it! Off-road mode, that works with your traction control to give you the most grip possible based on the surface that you're going over. Normal, this is for, whoa, more accelerated, more throttle response. There's even a mode for towing, the towing mode, if you have a trailer hooked up so that you can pull up to 3,500 pounds. Ooh, look at those LED turn signals. What, what? This, my friends, is a really nice looking profile. It's a sharp vehicle, and I think it will attract a lot of different types of families, individuals. You could use it for business, pleasure, for off-roading, weekend camping trips, whatever you want. It's got kind of large squared off cladding here. I love these two-tone machine finished wheels. Beautiful, gloss black, I like it. Then we've got more cladding down here, and that'll help from sticks and brush from scraping the paint. It does have smart key auto unlock on the front two doors. And as we come back here, I think we should take a look. Also, we've got this metallic silver roof rails. How you doing? Look at this, multi-spoke. That is a cool pattern. I really like that. These are 245, 45R20 wheels, so 20 inch alloy wheels. You like? Holy towing capacity, Batman. That's right. Capabilities are pretty strong on this one, Robin, because you can get 3,500 pounds with the turbo trim levels. But if you get a base 2.5 liter, you'll be towing 2,000 pounds. Well, that can't be a good sign. Safe travels, my friends. So let's see what we got going on in back. Since we're here, I mean, we've got simulated vents on the sides. We've got lots of matte black cladding, silver metallic, lower bumper, Two different large chrome pipes here. CX50 Sky Active G Turbo. G in the house. G, 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 G unit. LED tail lights. And then it's got a power back hatch. The power back hatch can be manipulated from the front, from this, or from the key that you see right here along the slim side. Slim Shady. Please stand back. Please stand back while I run around. See if I can beat that. Power, lift gate. You win, my friend, this round. Now look at this storage opening here. We can have 31.4 cubic feet of storage space behind the second row, or if we open it up, 56.3. The opening is wide, it's deep, it's tall. And I like the use of this storage space over here so we can fit a little bit more, kind of tucked out of the way. This one right here is gonna lower those seats when I'm ready, and then I can also put bagged groceries so they're not gonna roll around. Holla. We've got that same spot here. Oh, we got our temporary spare. Very nice, are we ready? Are we ready? Shabam. Shazam. Shabam, shazam. Now look. And of course, the most precious cargo for today's visit is going to be me because 31.4 cubic feet of storage space. I can put my feet here. I can go across. I've got my Star Wars socks on, the Death Star. <laughs> All right, so now what happens? 56.3, and watch this. 
I can lie like this, pillow, blanket. I like to do this experiment in most of the cars that I review because maybe overnight somebody has to camp or just sleep out for whatever situation. Situation, that's not even a word. And I cannot quite sit up like this, but I would like to. I could do this with the pano roof. That's right, a panoramic roof in here. It's glass that opens up the front seats. It exposes light for passengers in the back seat. So let's go ahead and open it here. We can stop it along the way, just like that. But let's go and extend it the whole way here. We can see it on the top. How much does it open up? You might be wondering that. Okay, does it go any more? No, it doesn't. I would like to see it open up more for the front seat, but I'll take what I can get. That is really cool, and we'll just look. That's what it looks like from the back seat. Really great feature for folks, front seat and back. Let's take a look at rear seat passenger room here, and this is a huge benefit. This may be a reason why you want a CX-50. It has nearly 40 inches of rear seat legroom, even with the seat all the way back and reclined. Look at this, still got space. Boy, these seats are really comfortable. They feel really good with this leather. Oh yeah, that's nice. You wanna squeeze the charm in here. <laughs> so let's go over. Now, this one here is kind of a big hump right here, says Buffalo Bill. So you do have to straddle it with your legs. Small, sort of a thin seat, but it's comfortable. Good lower back support. Now this is with the seat set for me, who's five foot eight. I'm five foot eight, by the way. So now you might want to look at headroom. Look at my legroom. You can really stretch out. One thing I'd like to see on here is I'd like to see these seats be able to recline even an inch or two, but it doesn't, they're fixed. Now, as we look at the back, we'll see similar properties and features. We've got that diamond shaped stitching all the way down. These seats are so plush. There's really good padding. Then it's really easy to latch in seats. Let's go here. Whoop. Oh, that's squishy. Squishy. Nice, good diameter for cup holders, for bottle holders. All right, we've got rear air vents, rear heated seats, and rear USB-A's. Maybe one USB-C would be cool to have there. This one is not a pocket. That one is a pocket. So at least one of the kids are gonna be happy. Now let's look here. Not soft touch. Soft, soft. It's like that game you played as a kid. You're getting warmer, warm. Oh, that feels good. Yeah, I like that. All right. We've got Bose speakers here too. 12 different Bose speakers, really good sound system. I've got it set up with what I think is optimal treble, optimal bass, bang the bass, turn up the treble. It's really good concert sound in here. Let's take a look at this power seat here. It's all the way down. So I'm gonna just raise it to see what taller or shorter folks can expect. All right, and it does it really quickly too. That's kind of neat. It can twist the seat. We can go forward and backward, and then I can recline the seat as well as having lumbar support. I just like having that lumbar support. You're so supportive. So if you wanna kick back and snooze, maybe at a rest area while you're resting halfway across country, you could do that. And of course, we can't forget the passenger. This one raises. Lowers, twists, lots of twists and turns. I assume it goes all the way back because the driver's does. You would want the passenger being able to recline more back than a driver. So yeah, it does all that. The only thing it's missing is the lumbar support feature. As we go in the passenger side, soft touch. Interesting material there. Kind of look, not scratchy, but that's what it does. And then here, what can I fit? I brought my drink along so that you can pop it in there. And that's a little bit rounder than a lot of drinks. 
thought it was a good example. And of course it fits in here just fine. So let's look at these seats. Terracotta is just absolutely gorgeous. I don't normally like a brown shaded interior. This one looks really nice. And I think probably because it has several different colors and patterns to it. This is soft touch. Oh, I like that. We've got the vents. Whoop. Like that. And what I find about this instrumentation panel is it's very simple. It's very easy to figure out. There's a lot of technology, but it's not overwhelmingly complicated or complex. Let's see where the blind spot detection is right there. It's in a good spot. Let's turn it off and then show you on the passenger side. That'll help you when somebody is coming up on either side of you in spots where you can't see with this auto dimming mirror that does have positions for garage doors. I turned the car on, put the air on because it's so hot. It's about 90 degrees in North Carolina. It's humid. Now look here, from where I sit, can I tell that my heated steering wheel is on or off? Can I tell that my air conditioning is on or off? Look at that. Maybe I'd like to see those lights down here, just so as you're looking from where a driver might sit, you can't really tell. You could probably feel it, but look at this. This is cool. Heated and cooled seats. I love that. So we've got that going on. Let's test the horn. That's a nice aggressive horn. I like that. And remember, we can change this up based on our drive mode. So we've got sport, normal, off-road, and you can even do towing as well. We gotta get one more look at those turn signals. We do have power folding side mirrors and they're over here, just like that, and just like that. A leather wrapped steering wheel. It definitely looks like a sport racing wheel, which you'd expect. We've got lots of features here. This is one I wanna show you though, the 360 view camera. It's really clear. I can put this in drive and up to a certain speed, you can actually see in front of you. That would help if you're on a smaller trail, maybe a thinner trail. You can also go behind you. I can show different angles. That's pretty cool. And I can even see beside me so you don't scrape your rims. Now, something else I'd like to point out here, this will help everybody. There's the power lift gate, but you have memory seating, two different positions of seats, and then I stop. That's sort of like an engine start and stop. If I don't want it to shut off at traffic lights, I can just do that and it'll be off. It'll be on, it'll be off. Got it? This is a manually operated, but it tilts and telescope steering wheel. The paddle shifters are right there. Minus, plus, holla. And then we've got our lane departure, our radar cruise control, voice commands. They work really well, especially with Apple CarPlay, I noticed. You can change information about your vehicle. That's how I'm currently doing, and I am testing it a little bit, we'll say a little bit more aggressively. You want to see the pickup, but that's kind of information you can see. Remember, you get 23 in the city, 29 in the highway if you just drive it normal and average, which I was not doing. And how do we open the center console? There are two buttons right here, one there, one there, nice and easy. Deep storage space with USB connectivity. I like that. And then look down in here. Oh, it's the Qi wireless charging pad on a diagonal angle. So you can put your phone right there. It'll fit most phones. If you're wider, just kind of keep an eye on that one because it'll extend just a little bit past there. It's got auto hold and it works really well. I use this to stop myself at traffic lights and I stretch my feet up. This is the command dial that we use if you're not in Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. If you're in Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, guess what? You can use touch to do your functions. You can use voice also, which works really well, but it's a touch screen if you're in those apps, Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. If you're not, 
then you use this dial when you're in the Mazda function. So you can do home. I can push this and go to my navigation. I can do radio just like that. Imagine waking up to the biggest. And if I take this drink out, maybe you can see that we've got extra storage right here. I put my phone here. We've got a 12 volt circular port that you could use the push button start right here. And then we have 12 Bose speakers. I'm out on that one, Bo. Right there, 12 speakers, really good sound system. Very easy to set up your tuning. Now look at this. This right here is our active driving display. It's like a head up display. Well, I mean it is, but it will show you how you're doing for what speed you're going, your lane departure alert, all sorts of things it can tell you like that so it can help you while you're going down the road and you don't have to look away from the windshield and it's not distracting it's in a nice soothing color really good safety feature up top girl scout we've got sunglass holder here we've got led lighting i like that then we've got LED light, it does have a slide. Oh, that's a good slider. It's like White Castle, you like my sliders? You know, you've also got the old bleep handles here. Let's come around here, does the driver have it? Yeah. Now, since we're here, we're gonna check visibility. Nice big windshield here. Ho, oh, that's really good visibility. Really good, I like that cut out at the back. It reduces a blind spot that could be there. Yeah, that's not bad at all. That's really good. The last thing I'll tell you along the interior, the seats are really comfortable. I alluded to it in the back. This is really nice. Lumbar support, boy, it comes out really quickly. Ooh, me likey. But anyway, this is very comfortable seating. I think you'll like it. This is great for road trips. It's just a way to do off-roading capability. We've seen the towing capacity, the off-road drive mode, but we've also got premium luxury in here too. So it's kind of the best of both worlds. We got the best of both worlds. All right, here, let's look at the window sticker so we can see what's standard, what's upgraded. This is the CX50 2023 2.5 liter turbo with the premium plus. It's in poly metal gray metallic with terracotta interior. And let me show you what you can get. We're looking at the pricing MSRP 41,550 with options 43. But with this premium plus, look at all the features that you can add here. I want you to see all that. There's no charge because it's standard on this trim level, but the paint color itself does have a $395 charge. So let's look here, we've got 25 combined, 23 in the city, 29 on the highway. Going down here, it's new, so it's not quite rated yet. All right, let's take a look at what's standard on the vehicle. Take a look, take a look, take a look, take a look at me now. Feel free to stop the video so you can go line by line and see what jumps out at you. Thanks everyone for watching. Let me know what you think of Mazda CX-50. Anything jump out at you? How about that poly metal gray metallic paint? What about the terracotta colored interior? Sharp, sharp, double sharp. But anyway, thanks so much. Leave a comment, say hey. Tell me where you're watching it from. Tell me you're a new subscriber. And then leave a comment. Let me know what your thoughts were about the interior, the exterior, the performance. Holla. All right. I'm on social media other than YouTube, hit subscribe, at Auto Jeff Reviews. That's at Auto Jeff Reviews TikTok and Instagram. You'll see shorter videos of what I just did here. Thanks so much. Peace to the world. See you next time. <music>